Can you hear me, man? I can. All right. So thanks for doing this. We have open mic eagle. Can you hear uh, me? Okay. Perfectly. You have a you have a way better setup than I do. Oh, your room looks yeah. tight, though. Oh, thank, I appreciate it, man. I really appreciate you doing this, man. How you been holding up during the quarantine and uh, everything? Uh, you know, it's, it's been challenging, man. I, I definitely lost all of the um, all the guaranteed income that I, that I thought I was going to have. So I've had to hustle and, and figure out how to make it work, man. But but it's, it's, it's been OK. It's been it's been chill. I hear you. And uh, rest in peace, MF Doom. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that that was a rough way to start the year. Yeah, uh, can we uh, let's start with that because that that kind of affected me in a major way too. Like as far as my mood and everything, and uh, how how much of an effect uh, an um, influence did he have on your life? I mean, he was my favorite rapper, man. Like, and and this is not something I just started saying after he passed. Like, he was me neither i knew KMD, i was a kmd yeah. i'm a huge yeah. kmd fan man yeah i mean i, I like the kmd stuff but like that like this doom for me man. and and i can't even just say it's doom because it's doom and it's victor von and it's king Ghidra. like you know what i'm saying it's mad villain it's, it's all of that like danger doom all, like, yeah yeah it's just just like that fully formed character yeah made, just... made the best rap music as far as i'm concerned man not only his raps his production i mean that's what i love too man just his production style yes, is just so dope so absolutely. dope um yeah that's a major 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 loss man that um i thought you know w w the, the morning it happened i i kind of breezed by like i looked at his post but i didn't read the um what it said right and then um uh, my you know the homie mestizo yeah. hit me up and said r.i.p and i'm like what and then it hit me like a ton of bricks i'm like Gee, no this can't be true bro i was trying to take a nap that day because i had stayed up late the night before and i was just like trying to not sleep through um you know the clock hitting midnight so like i and i never really try to take naps but like i laid down for like half an hour and when i opened my eyes my phone was just full of text messages of people saying like Oh my God, this is crazy. Rest in peace. And then I would look on the internet and saw the news. Like it was, it, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you, dude. That's, that was, a, that was not a bright day. Um, did you find it weird that he had passed October in uh, late October, right? On the 30th. Yeah. Uh -huh. So why, why, why did they uh, wait that long to reveal the news? I don't know, man. I, I, it's I kind of weird, that... isn't it? It is. I, I do know the, him and his family have been very secretive over the years in terms of like where he is, why he can't come back. Like some people, if they've dug hard enough, they, they know, you know, that information, but they've never been public about any of it. Even when he couldn't like do his shows, like he never really came out with an explanation of why he was doing that, you know? Right, um, right, so right. So I, I, I guess at the end of the day, it was just something that they wanted to keep private. Maybe, you know, it, it could be the kind of thing too, man, where you know, if, if you're his partner um, and you know how much he means to the world, like maybe you want to have a second to mourn by yourself before like yeah, family uh, matter. Yeah. yeah before yeah, the yeah. whole world. You got to respect like it. It, did. It, it could be, you know, yeah. and I'm just speculating, but it could be. Yeah, I know there's conspiracy. I don't want to get into all that either. I know there's conspiracy theories and shit about it, too. I, I don't want to even know that. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I wasn't aware. Yeah, there. Uh, I, did, I didn't it didn't really. uh hit the right way i didn't want to like look into it, it kind of pissed me off because i'm like mm -hmm. I, I did that's it's it's a bit disrespectful like right the way the, the uh uh they're breaking down the numbers and how it's like it was some kind of ritual and i, I didn't want to get it i didn't I, yeah i didn't want to i didn't want to get into all that because i'm oh, like now nah, they're, they're, they're 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 reaching there you know what i mean yeah bro was what like how old was he, he well it was i discovered that and then he's got to be 40 he got to be 49, early, right? Yeah, or like at least. 50 or 48, 49, 50, something like yeah, that. Yeah, man. I mean, that's a weird time to start doing rituals. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's, Yeah, yeah. That's... No, well, no, they said it was some kind of like sacrifice, like some Illuminati sacrifice because they, Come you know, because the jersey said 33 and I they're reaching. Like I said, they're yeah, reaching there. That's, they're that's reaching. a long, that's a long reach. Yeah. Yeah. Reach. But uh, let's let's get back to you, man. You've had man. It, it, I've just been stoked seeing your progression over the years. I've I've discovered you through uh, 
dumbfounded in a uh the crew swim team back in yeah, the man. day and yeah, uh man that's the family um do you, um and i don't know if you remember uh mestiz this is i'm gonna bring mestizo back in the mix mm -hmm. Back when I li I lived in a smaller apartment, I don't know if you got remember coming over, but that's the first time I think I met you. Nah, what in, in L.A.? Yeah, you came over. You and a bunch of other MCs came over to my little shoebox apartment. I know Dumb was there. You were there. My homie Iota Arcane was there. Mestiza was. It was like eight uh, MCs. Was we recording? You 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 guys came through. Just it was like at night. Huh. It was a yeah, small, I, I don't know if you remember. It was a long time ago, <laughs> but I of, remember. I remember a lot of, a lot of blurry nights. From yeah, that era. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, going back to um, those days, like, so how did you guys form? And like, what was the background on, on uh, forming that crew and everything? On a swim team? Yeah. So, you know, we were from the blow, man. And, and the way things go at the blow, the entire time the blow was open, ever since like AC Alona app started it. So like a, a, a generation of people would attract there. So like, I think the first new generation that it attracted was like the afterlife. And, and that was a lot of the good life dudes too. So like CBE bus driver two max and them, they formed the afterlife at project blow. So like, that was like the first generation of crew that formed at the blow after the good life. Right. But and the then, OGs were like, um, like the heavyweights, like, yeah, the but that's, now that's going back to the good life though. And self Jupiter and all them. Right, exactly. Freestyle. Oh, okay. Fellowship. So there are yeah. there's generations. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, and yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, and then the generation right before me was customer service. Oh, that's the, no can do and yeah. them. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no can do and kale mm -hmm. and, and choice and you know, uh Josu and why mm -hmm. not and all of them. Um and so I got there in two thousand four. And, you know, it was me and, and Dumb and Psychosis and Lear Flip and um, Satire, mm -hmm. um, Rogue Venom. Uh, we all, we were the next generation. Like we were the ones that just, we that's around the time all of us showed up and we was the ones killing the ciphers at that time. Right, we right, that's crazy. Each other, and mm -hmm. this, that's when we started linking up. The first sub crew, it was me, Dumb and Psychosis linking up as Thirsty Fish. And then we added on all the other homies and made the bigger collective the swim team. Yeah, I just remember back then seeing y'all like, you know, I remember when Fat Beats was still around. Yeah, man. You guys hit the, the show circuit pretty hard. You guys yeah, we, we were, were on shows show. and shit. We was doing any show. I remember seeing the name. I'm like, oh, there they are again. There they are again. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, and then you guys recorded two albums. Um, or three we recorded one as the swim team that's Ocean's Eleven, mm -hmm. and then we recorded two albums as Thirsty Fish. Um, mm -hmm. so that's Testing the Waters and Watergate. Oh, I forgot about swim team, and then there's Thirsty yes. that's the crew, but then the, co the collective was swim team, exactly. Exactly. And then when did uh, and then that's when Dumb broke out into the battle circuit, yep. and then and then what happened to you because you 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 kind of progressed doing your own thing too, and I want to, yeah, man, I want to uh, get started, to that. I started putting out my solo records like we put out the first Thirsty Fish album in 2008 and then we put out our second album, I think, in 2011. But I put out my first solo in 2010. OK. Um, and so and that both of those were on Mush Records, my my solo and our second album. And so like Mush had been putting out Indie Cats, Aesop Rock, Bus Driver. And I know Thavius um, and Gino yeah, exactly, fuck with them too. Because exactly, exactly. I worked so, at Amoeba. I was oh, jealous. Worse. I was okay. jealous. I would see like I was like a cashier and I was trying to like I was trying to figure out how these guys always releasing music. Oh, they're mm -hmm. on these uh, labels. And yeah. I was like studying them. I'm like, how are they doing? Especially Gino. Shout out to Gino. Shout out to Gino. I mean, sure. dude, he's the most he's put out you know, the most music yeah. out of everybody. And, and and that generation, so subtitle, bus driver, like mm -hmm. they're the ones that really taught me the business. You know what I'm saying? They're the ones that really like showed me like, this is how you book your own tours. This is how you get, this is how you get your albums in Amoeba. Talk to the homie John. And like, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Gino, dude, he like knew everybody that yeah. came into the store and he was, he would have a new album every month or right. It would be on uh, a new album on uh, GSL and then on Mush, going back to Mush, going back yeah. to Mush. So didn't mean to interrupt, but I just yeah, thought no it through. But, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So like, so I started my career that way, man. Like I went, I followed that line, like towards the, okay, I'm, I'm going to put out my albums through the indie labels 
and and tour and try to get on rocking my own thing mm-hmm. and, and but and really kind of going like that alt route like that that la like you know where where like like you say uh dumb and sat and even lear flip like they were going really hard in the battle thing oh for sure like, yeah i didn't for sure. I, I wasn't like i tried it once like i about a rhetoric once and i didn't i don't know i didn't like the feel of it because i was used to like freestyle battles so the whole, you know, preparing and writing, like it's, I think it's very entertaining. It just wasn't really for me. Yeah, you know, me neither. I tried it once at a uh, low end, and uh, I actually, I think jo- Jonathan was there. I'm like, hey, how do you, how do you, how do you battle? Like, how do you, like, <laughs> I'm more like, I like writing my shit, you know, and like, yeah, doing conceptual songs. But go, go ahead, keep keep going. Yeah. So like, you know, they was they was getting really big and really busy and with the battle thing, and I was just like, I just kind of started working on my craft of albums and making songs and like trying to tour. Like uh-huh. trying, to, trying to tour was a big thing for me. Well, so ain't like, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it, it ain't. And then mm-hmm. so, but while I'm touring, I'm also making business contacts. So I'm meeting Chesky. So now I'm like talking to fake four and putting out albums through them. Oh, uh, and dope. Then, dope. And by that time, no can do has started Hellfire Club, that record label here in L.A. Oh, so yeah, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put out an album through that. And then Alpha Pup through. too. Did you mess with Alpha Pup as well? Now Alpha Daddy Kev Pup shit? Was, was for a time Hellfire Club and Alpha Pup was linked together. That's Daddy Kev shit, right? Yeah, but yeah, I never yeah, yeah. I never did an album on Alpha Pup directly. But okay, you know, that, okay. that's family, like low yeah, and yeah, Alpha yeah, Pup. Yeah. Like, that's that's, why, that's why I asked, because I know they're kind of linked, sort of. In yeah. That way. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that you know, there's a bunch of labels that are distributed through Alpha Pup. And right, Hellfire right. Club was was one of those. Right, right, right. And then, and then, so, so you're just kind of you're grinding on your own and figuring it out. Yeah, man, I, I really hit the road heavy, man, because I got laid off from a job in 2009, and um, and it was kind of like fork in the road situation. Like either, you know, either I go back and try to rock the day job thing, or I really try to figure out this music. And yeah, and that, that really put me on the road. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and the whole career started to open up once I was able to really hit the road. And then do, do you remember any memorable like tours or mini tours uh, from back then? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Just 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 throw out a few. Throw out a few. Here's yeah. one. Here's one. The first, uh, the, um, this is back when I still had my day job. Thirsty Fish. We used to do these things that we used to call weekend world tours because mm-hmm. because I, I couldn't really leave. I had a day job. So yeah. I couldn't really like going on a real tour. So we would just tour whatever you could do in the weekend. And I remember this one time um, we worked with I think it was it was rhetoric and it was. Oh, who was the homie from Grind Time, man? Uh, from the Bay. God. Um, Lush. Yes, I think we were. Yeah, we worked with them, and we. I don't like, know how I know that. I'm yeah, just a fan. <laughs> I've I've watched so much content. I'm like, okay, that's that guy. But we um, we booked a tour that was like we hit San Jose, um, I think it was Berkeley, and then no. we and then we supposed to then we we were gonna hit we hit Tahoe and then Reno was supposed to be the last show. So like we hit the San Jose show hella late because we left town too late. So yeah, we like, yeah. got there and we damn near missed the whole thing. Um, I think the Berkeley show or whatever was was cool. But then when we're driving up to Tahoe, you know, Tahoe's up in the mountains. Shit. And yeah. it's snowing and it's blizzarding. I bet. Yo, so like we try we hit a turn too fast. So my car got stuck in the snow. Oh, uh, somebody had geez. to like come by and help push us out. Uh, we get to the hotel and we got stuck in the snow again at the hotel. Um, and then I realized I didn't have my phone. My phone fell out of my pocket when we were stuck in the snow the first Jeez, time. Louise. And then we, we finally get to the venue. Psychosis is so excited that we finally there. He starts running out the car and like slides in the snow and like crashes into this other car. Yeah, and then the- we, we finally get inside the venue. And and you know, and the show starts to happen, dude. We in there rocking for like eight people, G. Uh, <laughs> but you, sometimes it's like that. Which, yeah, and but that was, you know, this is really early on. So it was oh, like, oh yeah. Like, it was it was we were learning that, you know what I'm saying? And then um, so we do the show, put snow chains on the tires, they pop off, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, oh, geez. And, and then we 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 go to Reno, we get all the way to Reno. I think it's like an hour away, maybe two. We get in a hotel room. Um, the show was that night. And we're sitting there in the hotel room and I get this this call from rhetoric and it's saying, yo, uh, I just got a weather alert. We got to get out of town right now or else we're going to get snowed in for a couple of days. Dude, that's some rough <laughs> so situations. We, we had to cancel the show. Oh, drive, Lord. Drive backwards west 
through the snowstorm. Yeah. To get back oh, to the Lord fire have mercy. It was it was the most terrible, awfulest thing ever. Yeah, but, that, but hey, you gained experiences. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. And then like back then, because I remember like this is going back to my amoeba days, because I wasn't on a label. And I try to I still want to put out music. Were you guys pressing up your own CDs and going to um, uh, Kinko's and doing all that? I was doing that. Uh, and, and occasionally as Thirsty Fish, we would release little things like I remember we mm-hmm. had a maxi single once. Yeah. But our album albums, both of those came out through labels. One came. Oh, out that's dope. Called Bell rang. That uh-huh. the one, and the second one came out through much. Oh, that's so dope. Yeah. And then so you you guys would sell your own merch just on your just these tours. Yeah. And we would sell. We used Regional to do tour? big numbers on my space through the PayPal. Oh, room. yeah. We well, a lot of these numbers. viewers and listeners might yeah. not, not know what my space was. So my space was basically kind of the Instagram of back then. But you could yeah, put your music out there. Exactly. It was at your was friends really and focused. stuff. So like if you were a musician and you had a, a profile on there, it had a music player. And that was very important for all of us. to. Put oh, yeah. You could put there. four songs. I just remember you yep, could four, four of your bangers, four bangers, the four ones songs. you think. Yeah. And you could Do you check songs. every day? Oh, yeah. This, this, someone listened. Yeah. We used to be about that, man. Yeah. It was a big thing. And making little bulletins, let people oh, know yeah. you shows and all of that. And then your top eight friends yeah, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Top yeah. Yeah. Deal. Top eight was a big deal. Isn't it a trip how like even that like uh just how like social media has progressed and yeah. like technology. It's so weird now that everyone like everyone we have our own like platforms and everything. Yeah, it's different now, man. It, it's it, way it, different, we, huh? You know, we were all just trying to figure it out back then. Um, I remember Lil B. You remember Lil B back then? Like he had. Oh, like, I don't think I he do. Had, like a dozen different MySpace pages. Well, that's smart. Like, he was probably you know, marketing and yeah, he, he was, was on of, that tip. Yeah, that was one of the ways he got on. Like, who is yeah. this dude? Like, why has he got so many different? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And going back to you, do you do, you do your own? Because I see some gear back there. Do you you do your own production as well, right? Uh, yeah, man. Sometimes it, it just depends on the, on the uh, on the work. Like right now I'm doing music. I'm scoring a couple podcasts. Dope. So yeah, yeah. I noticed that. Well, I want to plug all that, too, at the end as well. Um. So uh, what kind of gear are you uh, utilizing for your production there? Uh, everything is in the box, man. So like I do everything in Ableton. I just use different controllers and stuff. So like that's just, you know, like, a man, controller. everybody's on Ableton. Huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, Ableton changed everything for me, man. Like because it's all right there. Do I I produce in it? I record in it. Everything. I, huh? I perform with it. Everything. So describe to the viewers and listeners what 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 able to is it is it an all around program like recording production everything everything uh any anything you want to do with sound it can do you know it's can it's, you it's, sample it's, yeah for sure you could sample sure. yeah man you can you can you can yeah any anything so anything. it could do what like an NPC could do yeah for sure. What the fuck? now you have to use different controllers to like MIDI controllers you, and stuff. Yeah, if, if you want to like put stuff on pads and play it like you're doing an MP, yeah, you gotta yeah, use yeah. a MIDI controller for that, but it can do all of that. Dude, that's amazing, man. Yeah, man. So that's all you need nowadays, huh? Yeah, that's it, man. I mean, and it's a long learning curve because yeah, because so I, I have the intro pack, uh, but I couldn't bro, it took me I years. Could, I, I couldn't figure that I, I couldn't even make a basic beat on. I'm a I'm a sampler guy like the uh-huh. SP three hundred three. Right. Uh, that's what I use. And that I'm a, a rest in peace Doom. That's I know Doom fuck with the SP as well. Word. Him and Madlib as well. Yeah, and he, yeah I think but, Madlib uh, messed with the four hundred four too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, man. So um, I always wa- also uh, on top of your music. I I saw something on your Instagram as far as you were you 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 were auditioning for other things. In the entertainment. Oh, yeah, man. Because I, you know, I'd, I'd done a bunch of TV stuff, man. I had a couple TV shows that were on. Uh, and and through that, just through being able to get those opportunities, um, I end up going on a lot of auditions, too. So that little video I made today. Was I felt about, like, it, man, especially the audition, audition process. Yeah, man, I hate it. Because <laughs> I didn't go as deep as you, but I did the commercial game. And, dude, I, I, I there, it, there came a time where I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, man, it's rough. Cause I was close to getting a Verizon, like a mm. huge syndicated national. It was. Um, I got a couple homies that get down like that, man. I'm like, I, every time I see them, I'm like, you get that. Get I that. was That's close, great. man. I was close to getting a campaign, a Christmas campaign, man. 
Oh my! It goodness. would have been like four or five commercials, but I made it to the last audition and they gave it to the other Asian dude. Ah, and it, it was so painful that I was in the room and they go, um, Jimmy, you could stay. Uh, Steven, can you go um, go out in the hallway? Oh, that's so I, I they they did it right in front of my eyes. Like, I Dang. like so they, they basically like it was kind of like, you know, doing American Idol and the person like the other singer, like th th like doing so good. And then you like not hitting your your chords and then them like just being silent. You know what I've I mean? I've been there, man. I've been there. And I, I, it's I told just, the story in the video, man, like. I remember this one audition I really killed, but then they gave me a note. They wanted me to do it this way instead of that way. And I oh, on the spot, apart. on the yeah, spot, I completely fell apart. Too. Yeah, and I was like, ah, you know, but, but they made me stay through the whole thing. Oh, that's right. So uh, they said, Stephen, you can go out in the hallway. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll get you when we need you. And oh, I was there. God. They didn't they never got me. Oh, they never got nah, you? dude. Like I, I remember oh, going uh, so on. You, you ever hit the La Brea 200 South La Brea? That's like a auditioning I, spot. It's near the Petco. It's on La Brea. But it was like I was in the hallway and it was I was there so long. Other like there was other uh, commercial auditions, you know, people signing in for some other spot, you know, mm -hmm. and I just remember standing there and it, it just my mind playing tricks on me. Oh, that's so grimy, dude. Uh, like it was like, well, maybe they might like me. Maybe they're doing, you know, they're testing me. But then it got to point 30 minutes, 34 minutes, oh, 40 minutes. God. And then I just remember that them clapping, you know, and I'm, I'm listening in the room and they're <laughs> they're laughing at everything. Oh, great. That's fantastic. Uh... You know? And then did, I did just you, did you end up seeing a commercial later? And let, let me get to that. OK. <laughs> and so that's when the real pain hit me, because mm. I mean, that was painful that day because I'm like, all right, homie, got it. But then just seeing them run the shit out of those commercials, <sighs> it was one of those ones where it was like the Christmas caroling, like he knocks on the door, jingle bell, you know, mm -hmm. and then but they played it all the fucking time. That oh guy made God. he made some cheddar, my friend. Uh, uh, he made at least what 25, 40 K on that whew, motherfucker. You know, to this day, you man, know what I'm saying? I know it's not like that now, but back then I know how much that fool made. Yeah, man. He it, made it, some it, he made some bread to this day, man. I have a hard time watching stuff that I auditioned for. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's, just, uh, just it's like an outer body experience, yeah, man, seeing the billboards. For shows like mm, oh yeah I'm that must do something that different show. to you yeah <laughs> the billboard that so you've had that happen yeah for sure for where you sure, see some man. the other dude on the billboard absolutely lord what does that do to you that uh, you know it's 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 a it's a special kind of sting because it's profound it really, it yeah it's a profound it, mm -hmm. it activates the hate in my heart i don't like being a hater but it activates the hate in my heart you know what i'm saying so like this is it's a it, it's a rough it's a rough journey out here. Like, mm -hmm. how do you uh, maintain your uh, spirituality? How do you stay calm through th these uh, storms? In, in well, everything? man, you know, I, I really do. You know, I'll sit here and, and joke and bellyache about, you know, auditions. But then like I'll, I've also like I had a television show with my name on it. Like I have I had, I was on billboards once. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like that's crazy. When my show was running like there was a time when. Uh, two years ago, I looked out. My, I could look out my bedroom window and see a billboard with my face on it. You know what I'm saying? That like, must do something different to you. I mean, soul. it was so like, it was wow. so dope. But like, the thing is, I come from underground hip hop, man. I so it's like rest. almost the antithesis of that. Well, I, I just you know what that, I mean. I mean that to say, I'm not supposed to be in any of them rooms. <sighs> right, because so you're used to going to bloat and yeah, man. So I'm, yeah, I'm and then very, yeah. Like, grateful so that's that's what keeps me grounded okay it's, that's what you meant okay yeah to that like that i've been able to do this stuff that on paper should have never happened right mm -hmm. right so that's why your journey is so interesting because not a lot of like underground rappers like make it that far you know what i'm saying yeah it's not easy man it's not even it's 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 hard enough just to have a career let alone like to be doing other shit you know what i'm saying right right and then that's always like the end it seems like, you know, in the, the I'm talking about like the entertainment, whatever, as a whole, like the whole scene. That's like always the end goal is like, you know, like Eminem. That's a good example. You know, mm -hmm. he started doing that and then he battled. Then he got eight mile then that, and then he's mm -hmm. in movie, you know, and all that. And so that's always like 
I, it looks like that's the trajectory, right? Like you start well, I mean, somewhere. If, if you're lucky, it is. And, and, you know, he, he's, he was very fortunate and, and also he was very skilled at a time when Dr. Dre, like the biggest producer on the planet was looking for like a, a skillful dude to work with. You know right. And so like, right. the opportunity met the, the preparedness and mm-hmm. then suddenly you take this dude from the underground and he becomes a megastar. The problem is they just, it, it ain't, it ain't usual that there's people running around handing out opportunities to people who are good at rap. It's not it, like people don't usually care if somebody's. Good. Oh, I mean, I mean, you know bloat is a good example. There's so Absolutely. many fucking the, some of my favorite dudes came out of the Micah nine AC, mm-hmm. all them, those guys are the were, greatest rappers ever ever, ever. Yeah. like otherwise he took out eminem you know what i'm saying in a battle. oh that like, dude was raw yeah, yeah. Other than, yeah he battled too right otherwise yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so you must have seen some crazy ciphers in oh battles absolutely hey absolutely. and then like a lot of other like other groups like ch- peeped that out right like jurassic five kind of came out of there right like now, Charlie- jurassic five was good life Oh, okay. So that's that yeah. was different. That okay. was you know, cut chemist and and um and um and Akil and all like they were they were called the Unity Committee back then. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They they used to go head up with the fellowship. That was that was like the one two of the biggest crews from the good life. I wasn't around back then, but but that that history is big, you know what I'm saying? That's huge. Uh, and then like even uh who is that rapper? Uh Ahmad was there a cat? Ahmad, Ahmad? Yeah. yeah, Ahmad was good life, yeah. And then who's the um little um See C- uh Skilo or Skilo, yep. I wish I was a little, a little bit, bit taller. taller. I yep. wish good, I was a baller. He, yeah, he, yeah. Lamert, so Lamert Park legend. So the so there the, there was opportunity even back then for certain cats. Right, but then both of those people you just named, you know, what I'm saying like they 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 had they they was able to catch the glow of like a, a, a Yo MTV hit, you know Yo MTV like, I saw them, their videos on Yo MTV raps and right but they didn't able they weren't able to have the opportunity to have like the extended career oh you know like to be like, in to be in the movies and all that yeah or even or even for the albums to be like for the albums to be promoted for their whole career because Ahmad is still dope Ahmad oh that still like Ahmad is amazing I just remember family. he was one of my favorites on the Wake Up Show. Yeah, he remember that. Yeah, joint? You, I don't know if you remember that joint he had with uh Ras Cast and Safir. It was on like the Street Fighter soundtrack or something. Oh yeah, yeah, come, I, come I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, well, like, I went I, all around the planet I, and no one hit it. No one Who's hit the first it. battle? If yeah. batter of them all, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, dude, that's a great uh, that's a great soundtrack, man. It is. There's some gems on there. Because Farside had a banger. Farside, yeah. Pandemonium. Yep. They had a banger on there too. Yeah, that's crazy. You brought that up. Um. So you you come from Chicago as well, right? Yes, sir. Born and raised. And so do you do you ever um, uh, colla- collaborate with um, cat? Because there's a lot of talented rappers out there, right? Like uh, yeah, Quell, sure. Quasar, Mole Man. That it just goes on and on the history, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, and I grew up with the Mole Man. Like that's some of the first DJs I ever met was like Panic and PNS and them uh-huh. uh, from the Mole Man when I was in high school, uh, but. I went away to college when I was 17 and then I moved to LA when I was 24. So I've been removed from like the scene in Chicago almost my whole life. Like I got homies that I started rhyming with in Chicago that's there, but like I, I never really linked with any of like the big, the bigger names from the shot. Cause I was never really around when I right. was doing my thing. Like I always did my thing out here. Right. Right. The reason why I know all them is cause you know, the, going back to the homie Mestizo yeah, actually, G, yeah, uh, G4. G4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he had met a couple cats. Um, This is way back. He like moved out there. I'm like, Who, who'd you meet? And then they played. He played me off white shit. You mm-hmm. know, the, the, the yeah, Filipino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off white shit. And I'm like, oh, this cat's eight. You know, because you know how Asians are. You, there's not many, you know, but when we hear of them, we're like, oh, there's he's Asian. Yeah. And so, I, <laughs> so so I heard his shit and I'm like, oh, shit, this is dope. And then it was off white, and then my, one of my favorites, probably one of my top whatever, Quell. Quell when I heard yeah. when I heard Quell shit, I'm like, okay, the, these guys are raw. Yeah, man, I, I like Quasar a lot too, man. I think Quasar is amazing. That's crazy you said that because I was I was thinking about like because I was because I was thinking about questions to ask you, and I'm like, you know, it'd be a dope collaboration if 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 Mike did a 
a collaboration with Quasar. Man, I feel like we did a song together. That would be raw, dude. Projects, but I can't remember if we actually did it. I know we talked about it years ago. But yeah, Quay, Quay is my man, dude. Like, I, I love his Raw, shit. raw. Yeah. Uh, typical Cats, raw-ass yeah, yeah. group, too. Raw they group. was, You know, like, when I left shot, you know, I was in this crew called the Nacrobats in Chicago. And, yeah, I've and, heard of them, yeah. yeah so oh, you were in the Nacrobats? Yeah, I was in Nacrobats? Oh, that's what's but like, up. But we was just a crew then. Like, we was just an all-city rapping, graffiti, breakdance yeah, yeah. crew. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, okay, okay. So it, they didn't start becoming, like, a rap group in that sense until like I was I was already I'd already left the city by that point so it came it went from a crew of like 200 people the rap group was just like five or six people you know what I'm saying Uh uh-huh okay that's dope that's dope that's my people like that's my family right there just like so you you have roots in that those are your Mm -hmm. Chicago roots but they they hip-hop roots like that's the thing like my hip hop roots are in Chicago and I got hip hop roots here in LA. Like, cause I'm always like, that's, that's my thing. Like I come from MCs. You yeah, know what I'm I know. Like, I got you MC can... in my blood. Oh, man. I know. You don't have to tell me twice. Yeah. yeah. That's why, you know, you know, it's crazy. A lot of the people you brought up, I, that's why, I mean, I, I interview a lot of like people like comedians and skateboarders, but I, you know, like cut chemist has been on here. Dumb's been on like a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, artists that you, you work with have, uh, been on here. I was. I just want to give them a platform. I think people need to know about. That's what. Yeah. Every platform. every signal boost counts, man. Like anytime anybody can help any of us get heard, it's a it's a blessing. You know. What I'm yeah. Saying? So let let's get back to. So what are you doing now? So you have your own podcast. Like, how do people um like, how could they support you if they they listen to this? Like, how could they directly support you, or how do they easily? find I mean, your music and yeah, buy your I would, merch. I would say, you know, like, cause that's my whole thing, man. I have my own record label. I have my own merch company. I have my own podcast network. Like dude, that's, more that's, power to you, brother. Yeah, that's man. dope. So like, I'm, I'm trying to push all of those things and like open Mike Eagle on all streaming services for music and on Bandcamp. Mm-hmm. Uh, my merch company is called merch engine. Damn, um, it's dude. always, it's always something there. <laughs> like yeah it's always a shirt or something like so how always, do they find it right now do they go to open mike like you go to mike you go to mike eagle.net everything is on there mike eagle.net Eagle. yep okay and then what about your podcast is it is it uh streaming on is it on itunes or spotify uh, yeah, yeah it's on it's on everything so my podcast network is called stony island audio mm-hmm. after stony island in chicago mm-hmm. and um my flagship show on there is a show called what had happened was where I interview Prince Paul every week. Uh, Prince Paul from, you know, De La Soul, oh, Handsome Man, Boy, I'm Modern a School. huge yeah. fan of Prince Paul. <laughs> so I talked to him about You all see, I have his CD right there. Which one is that? It's just it's a maxi single. Hold on. Oh, that's what's up. Politics of the business. Yeah, we have we have an episode about that album. This thing? Politics of the business. Yeah. Yep. yep. So I had met him. I had met him on um at a Comic Con. Oh, that's sick. And I got an interview with him. Uh, I was with D- the homie Dave David Cho, and then we were down there, and um yeah, I knew I was I was tripping out because it's like oh I'm about to meet one of my heroes. That's what's up. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I was nervous when I first met him to even take the podcast. Jesus, man, he's, a hero. he's a hero to me too. So you have an extensive interviews with Paul? At, yeah, thirteen, uh, twelve episodes, man. We did it. We did a. We did an interview about like pretty much all of his major projects. Oh, like, dude, I just I that's amazing. Produced, Handsome Boy Modeling School, working with Chris Rock, Grave Diggers, Stetson Sonic. Stetson Sonic, yeah. yeah man. Yo, man, that dude is he was creative from the from the jump. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what what are like even all the De La Soul albums? Did he do uh Balloon Mind State too? He did Balloon well? Mind State, yeah. He did the first three. And then what about stakes is high? He didn't do stakes is high. That's that was he, still raw though. No, yeah, it was great. It was great. That album. was a raw ass album. Yeah, fantastic album. But uh, De La Soul's dead. Mm-hmm. And so you, Iron Rising. So how do you? Because you've done. Let's. I mean, we're 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 towards the end. But I wanted to get a couple of collaborate because you've done some collaborations as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So didn't you do a song with Doom? And yeah, I, I got on. I I was on two songs with Doom. Um, one was on the Metal Face Me Zarface album. Yeah. Um, and then, so when I had my TV show, New Negroes, every episode had an original song that we got a guest star on. Oh, that's so dope. So we got him on one of them songs. Wow. So. And then can you can you name uh, some other collabs as well? 
and how people go well to- even if you just start with that you know i did a song with lizzo on that show i did a song with method man on that show you did a song um, with meth yeah man a song with method wu-tang man. yeah man what um, was it like collabing with a wu-tang member uh, it was incredible and, and that's you know, that, and, that's crazy this just but, but the sound this of that too. Peep this too. The the Zarface meets Metal Face on the one with Doom on. You know, Inspector Deck is in Zarface. So I'm on a song with Deck and Doom <laughs> Esoteric. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Uh, on dude. that song. And then, yeah, I, I did a joint with Method Man too. I mean, and the Method Man one was crazy because, like, you know, I, I did the song and then we got in contact and I sent it to him. And he like was following my rhyme cadence. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm you like, have you have so many different oh, styles. You have well, you, you know, have a variety of different styles. Blow, yeah, so that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> every every time you rap, it's a different style. Yeah, man, that's that's my that's my 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 rap schooling, courtesy. Yeah. Um. Now, what what are your thoughts on modern day like this mumble rap, like the way things are? Um. You know, I'm not I'm like not, Migos and all that. <sighs> Migos has a couple songs that I like. Uh-huh. Uh, and there's a couple of new artists that I like. Uh, what about Lil Pump? Lil Pump. I don't like Lil Pump. I don't like Lil Pump. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like Lil Pump at all. I, I really don't. I, don't, I like. I. I don't. I don't like appropriation. Yeah. Like yeah. Like if you don't. If you like. And and it's all good to be young and and to still be learning. But don't disrespect the people who who made this. You like Lil Xan. Yeah, I don't, I don't mess with that. Like, I, you he, know, he, like, uh, he talked you know, down on uh, Tupac there. You, you know, know what I mean? You do your thing. You tattoo your face up. You do what you want to do. But right, don't disrespect right. the people who made this because you wouldn't have nothing. You would, you would yeah. be strumming a guitar or something on the street. Like you, you'd have found something else to do. Right, right, like, right, right, right. Let's right. wrap thing. It's an art form, like, dude. People don't it treat came, it. It's an art. It came from serious people in serious situations that made this music for all of us to enjoy and some of us to be able to do. So I don't. I don't honor nobody, you know, disrespecting. The yeah. Giants, so um, I'm not, I just don't know too much about it, but just, just hearing it, like just their stylings and everything is just kind of like, it's almost like they're like a zombie, like do 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 Some of them, some of them are, some of them are dead like that. But then like, you know, there, there's some that's cool. Like I like, I think Lil Yachty's interesting. Like, I think oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Interesting stuff. Uh, I, I was really a fan of Juice World, rest in peace. I think he was really doing some different kind of stuff uh, on a microphone and really pushing other people to be better. You know what? I take that back. Trippy Red, he could style a little. Trippy he, Red got he, some yeah, yeah, stuff. he got some styles. He got He's some got points. some styles. There, there's one some song points. I really like. I forgot the name of it, but when I heard it, I'm like, oh, okay, that that's more like it. I like yeah, that. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, and, Trippy Red's cool. I, I do, you know, I, I don't appreciate it when cats aren't like really saying words, but like, I do think that I do think a lot of the young generation really does have bars, man. I think some of them really go for it and get it. And and I think that I, I think these kids, even if their image says otherwise, a lot of these kids work really hard. Like you can tell they make music every day. Right. You know right. Like that's, right. That's really what this is about. Well, they kind of have an advantage because the accessibility like back then, it's like if your homie didn't have an MPC or a four track, you're kind of asked out. That's true. But now we all got the same accessibility. But right. Right. You still know a bunch of people who are super talented, but they don't crank it out. You know, right, right, right. You know, I know (laughs) I know it's out there, but I still I'm still old school with my sampler. I know that there's all these other things. I just kind of I'm old school, new school. Like, you know, I, I record on the computer, but I still use my my uh, old gear and everything to yeah, do. Yeah, it ain't beats. about the tools. You know, I, what I'm talking about is the work ethic. Right. And, and, and no. I think a lot of these kids, even if they come off lackadaisical, they have crazy work ethic. And I appreciate that. You got to respect and that. You, you do. do. You really yeah, do. you do. You do. You do. Because they could be lazy. You would think they wouldn't because they're on the lean all day, you know, right. taking but, that lean. But that's what I'm saying. A lot of that is just an image. A lot of that is just like that's that's what you kind of got to look like. But, but they're not drinking that syrup every day or what? I don't think so. Cause I, how cause could I, you work with being all sedated like that? Right. I think that you, you, you know, I mean, if you look at jazz musicians, you know what I'm saying? Like they were uh, shooting, they're shooting doing heroin, heroin and shit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 Still doing very precise fingering with the piano. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Have so, you, like, have you ever, have you ever fuck with lean? Uh, I'm sober now, but back then, um, yeah, I, I fuck with it a little bit and, uh, I, I understood why they called it that. Yeah, because nah, I, 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 I was drinking it and then I was, I was <laughs> watching TV and then I couldn't move. I was literally leaned like my back was leaned to the to the side of the bed. I was like, I can't move. 
Yeah, no, nah, I can't. I can't. You know, like I'm. I'm not. I'm not much for for for, for substances. Man, I'm, I'm a drinker, but that's that's really mostly. Oh, I'm sober food. now. Over ten years. Yeah, what? I don't even smoke weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drink coffee and uh, I do a little nicotine, but no. <laughs> yeah, there's too much to do, man. You know. That's real. All right, man. So we're at the tail end. Now, this is the time. I really appreciate you doing this, man. Yeah, no uh, worries, man. man. And this is going to be my 200th episode. So this is oh, gonna be, snap. It is a special one. And when's I wanted it, to when's it come out. Uh, I'm ahead on scheduling, but I'll let you know. Okay. I'll, I'm going to tag you in the post word, and word, I'll word. let you know. I really appreciate I've been a fan for years, man. I've always I always I was always happy with your success. I'm like, oh, the word, you know, that, man. You've come a long way, man. Absolutely. You know? You've Still come going. a long way. <laughs> yeah. So Still how going. do um the listeners and viewers uh, directly let, let, let's I don't want to forget this. How do they how do they direct? How could they best support you right now again? I mean, streaming the music is always big. Streaming the podcast is always big. And those things are free. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, watching the videos, anything, just any engagement with my stuff, man, is, is it means a lot to me. But don't you got it, a Patreon? I do have a Patreon. So All right, yes. let's plug that. Let's plug your You're Patreon, right. man. You're so right. we can get more patrons going for you. you Patreon.com slash open Mike Eagle, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on there with exclusive music and video stuff every month. And you got the tiers and everything. Yep. Got two tiers. One. Okay. Uh, one is just for audio and one is audio and visual. So definitely uh, make your pledge today. Um, Patreon.com slash open Mike Eagle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's and it. your uh, what about your podcast? How do they directly stream and listen? Uh, go to what had happened was on, on any uh, streaming platform. But then um, also on MikeEagle.net, there's a whole page with every podcast that's on my network. You can peep them all out right there. OK. And then uh, do you have like a, a, a website as well? Yeah. MikeEagle.net. MikeEagle.net. Like music, podcast, merch is all right there. OK. And then lastly, um. Should people be waiting? Are you working on stuff right now? Always, always working. Okay, so when are you drop in the next album and like uh, EPs I, or whatever? I got, I got nothing I can like announce yet, man, because I'm in the early stages of, of making my next stuff. So I, I can't say when, but uh, but all, I'm always working on something. What if what if a listener wants to collaborate with you? Do you have like a price range? You know, like it, I mean, it's, it's really it's a case by case basis, man. It really is like I, it really is about what it, what the situation is, mm -hmm. how it's going to come out. Do I know the person? Am I feeling the music? Like it's a lot. Oh, so that like, matters with you. Oh, for sure. OK. And so what if they do want to reach out and uh, there's a kid in like Oklahoma who's just banging it out in the basement and they want to they want to collaborate with you? Uh, OME booking at gmail.com. There you go. That's I mean, you, that's how you get at me. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, did, do you think I did I cover everything? Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> we, we got it all. We got it in. <laughs> hey, I really appreciate your time, man. I really yeah, do. Dude, no problem, okay. dude. It's good, it good, good to good to reach Yeah, it's good to catch. I haven't, I haven't seen you in over 10 years. Like, it's been. Word years but i i still remember that that night you guys came out you don't remember but i remember I don't i wish because you you were literally like kind of checking out my stuff and you're like kind of looking at my little projects like oh he, you know he, this kid he's doing something you know I asked what's up. yeah I'm glad, I'm glad i was respectful <laughs> no no you were you were you were out of you were a stand-up guy out of all of them because they were all everyone was freestyling but yeah. you took the time to like peep me out and look at my stuff and i i remember i was just at the sampler while you guys were freestyling the whole night and uh but that was like so long ago i think that was 2005 2000 that was oh, a probably long, yeah that was a long time ago long time ago. long time ago i really appreciate you man and um i'll let you know when this drops and uh yeah and then uh, definitely um uh become a patron today uh on uh, mike's patreon all right, for so. Okay, okay, you're free to go. I'm I'm gonna do a couple more announcements, but thanks okay, for your brother. time, brother. I appreciate Peace, it. Man. Okay, Mike. Peace. Peace. <clears throat> All right, so there you go. Open Mike Eagle. That was a fun one. I always have a, a different feel when I interview other, like musicians, other producers and rappers. I I I could have a different kind of connection and feel with it. I don't have my cheat sheet. I'm just gonna just say it right now. Um. StevieWeebyShow.com. Uh, I do have a shirt order. That's good that I said that I have to complete the shirt order. Um, just know that the, it, the the orders might be a little delayed because of uh, COVID and everything. Um, 
steviewebybandcamp.com. I'm 98% done with my project. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. It's been taking me a while, but I'm self-producing the whole thing. I have one joint that Dylan and Eddie helped me with, but the rest I'm just all on my SP303 sample sample based cool cool shit um uh if you if you want to support my patreon patreon.com slash stevie weeby um instagram slash q u a n g o u um am i missing something i think that's about it thanks for tuning in um and uh yeah i think that's it have a good one peace